Hey everybody, Raul here for Bass Musician Magazine, and today we have the extraordinary honor and pleasure of catching up with a good friend, Ricky Phillips from Styx. Yay! Raul, oh, thank you. It's so great to see you. Oh, it's so great to see you again, man. The last time we spoke, 2017, you are on our August cover. We got together at the amphitheater out in Ridgefield, Washington, and what a whirlwind of events have happened since. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so... yeah. Think of that, but I, I, I remember it vividly. We had a really good time. You and I immediately clicked, and it's good to see you after all this time. Oh, thank you. So so great to see you, too. And it was so wild because we were deep in the mission to Mars in 2017, right. unknowing that we would end up in a huge situation <laughs> here on our yeah. planet. So kind of getting caught up, I understand that... Pre-pandemic, you guys, of course, everybody went through the pandemic, but you guys have been very busy during this time, and right. we're working on Crash of the Crown. Yep. And so most of that was written pre-pandemic? Some. The way sticks works, and generally, see, I'm trying to always find my way in there, because in the past, I've always been more probably participatory in past bands. But Sticks is a special thing, and people always say, what is what is it about? And I said, I know exactly what I think it is, the mm -hmm. Sticks have. And that is, it's always about a positive message. And that's very hard to do and make it rock and roll. I mean, it's a little pansy. When, you know, everybody lives off of grief and sorrow, and that's what, that, what breaks your heart and touches your soul. But uh, Crash of the Crown, I waited what? for Todd to finish sort of his drum map of everything. And then I recorded everything here in my studio, not what was on the album, but I pre-recorded and pre-wrote all the parts as they would feed them to me after Todd was done. Mm -hmm. There was really no thought behind it. It just all worked somehow. And then I would send it back to, there's only one song, i trying to remember which one it was, where Will was so married to the bass part, sketch bass part, which I got a chuckle out of because I, I thought my bass part was far superior. <laughs> Go figure. But I played his part in the verses of this song. But I did get to, I remember, God, what song was it? I, get, I did get to write a very cool, the middle section, the middle eight is the Beatles used to call it, but it's probably more than eight, eight bars. I wrote, kind of got to get myself back in it. But that's been kind of the freedom that's been given me. I, I suppose if I didn't get what Sticks is about, I would get the boot, you know, mm -hmm. as far as that goes, and they say, play this. But I haven't had to do that. I haven't been able to write all my parts. And there's a few things that are written because of the way the song is written. But, of course, you can do nothing about it. It's already kind of there for you. But I love playing in sticks because they love prog. They want to do big hooks, and they want to do great melodies. They want stacked vocals whenever they can and when mm -hmm. it's not too much. And that can get a little bit candy-ass sometimes if you're not careful. So they, they've done it with kid gloves, and I think that I have to have great respect for the way they do it. And it, it's really fun. I can't wait till they send me things. Right now I've been working on some things and some songs really for other, other people and other things. But I came up with an idea, and I, I, we just set the national anthem in uh, Pittsburgh for uh, the Steelers. Nice. And while we were there, because we're taking a little break from each other, and we had that kind of happened. Well, I went to Will's house for two days to record some stuff in his studio and then flew to Pittsburgh from there. And while I was there, I said, you know, I've got this song. I just, I, I generally don't bring up or try to offer stuff because my stuff generally isn't stick style, mm -hmm. but it sounds like a JY song. And so I kind of hummed him a little bit to him and he was, and I, I think I could tell, I could tell he liked it. So we made first of that. Maybe, maybe when I see you next, no, it didn't happen that we didn't do it. But, but I generally, I have to respect having been in multiple bands. When you come into a band, you have to be able to slip into those slippers, you know, put on those slippers and be in Otherwise, you're you're kind of like mucking up the works. You, when band has success of a sound, mm -hmm. and we've all heard maybe 
a, that one record that your favorite band has done and you're going, whoa, what, what are they thinking there? You know, and everybody does deviate and maybe not knows and thinks, well, this is great. This is going to be a, a new direction or whatever. And none of us like it because we like what we liked. Mm -hmm. And it's just a funny thing. So I, I greatly respect that about sticks and about knowing who you are. And they're tough. They're tough. They make you go deep, deep and bring out the best you've got. Everybody, everybody in the band is an overachiever, and it's very cool. Very cool. Well, and with Crash, part of what I noticed, and I think it was a real, in a bit, a departure from, from what I'm used to because there's a lot of, sticks sound there is exactly what you're describing it it is so iconic that you could be blindfolded to go okay yeah this is sticks however it takes us kind of on a journey in a almost apocalyptic beginning and then it leads us into surviving and hope and <laughs> and yeah. looking towards a future which at the time that this was all happening, as we were in the midst of a worldwide pandemic and all this, to me, it was there was more urgency in the message than I've, I've heard traditionally from Styx. It matched what was going on in the world, but it was a completely different story. However, the sentiments of, you know, things, things being a mess or screwed up and, and going wrong and no one knowing quite how to fix it immediately. That, I think we just got lucky there, to be honest. I guess I would say Will's and Tommy's love for Prague. Of course, Lawrence and Todd and I are way Prague. I would say Todd more than I. But Lawrence and I seem to have the same influences and background in, in a lot of the Prague bands that we loved. Well, so does Todd. But for some reason, it was such a great... For Will to come in to make him a part of the band because he was our producer and he seemed to work seamlessly and always be this young fountain of ideas. And so his love of Prague comes from, because we're, we're so much older than him, I, and I say so much, I don't know what we are. We've got to be at least 15, 18 years older than him, though. And he comes at it from maybe... Prague guys that weren't, you know how when you're young, you just, you feed on all that stuff mm -hmm. and then you're older and you're doing your own thing. Well, he came up a little later, so he's picking up on maybe some prog things that we didn't before. Well, you know, you don't think of Sticks as a prog band. I don't want to go off on this tangent. I just realized, I just heard myself. Yeah. We're not a, we're not a prog band, but, but we love prog. And so it's introduced tastefully where we can and sometimes it's the premise of, of a song too i've noticed got you well and i think when we start looking at definitions of genres when it comes to music it's also chronological because if you think of where i mean you guys for over 40 years of doing this if we look back it was a very progressive sound <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, right. and so you go well it was what was going to be coming towards the future and continues to you know, blaze trails as as we speak. I just I, I, I crack up because I think of sticks as pretty, some pretty heavy, riffy, cool stuff. But then I think of lady, na -na -na -na, big vibrato and all, you yeah. know, which is totally not that. But it's it worked because they presented it the same way as they did their their heavy stuff. Absolutely. I, yeah. Exa yeah. Well, and I and I think also with Crash of the Crown, it like. So many you know, excellent tunes, they allow the listener to identify with the portions that you identify. So whether it was pandemic, whether it was your personal situation, and, and this, I think why people will say, oh, that's my song or something when they hear a particular tune, even though it wasn't necessarily made for them, but they're going, okay, this is clicking all of the spots and I, I'm, I'm identifying. And so just listening to that, like I said, I went through the series of emotions where I'm going, oh yeah, I remember where I was feeling kind of this way, but oh, as we got more <laughs> towards the end, I, I'm yeah. going, yes, there is some light at the tunnel. And, and again, fortunately, that was released 20, 2021 and you guys have chased it with uh, EP, the, the same Stardust. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's... Something about that is feels feels good. It's just it's the musical when musical takes over your mood or puts you in a mood immediately. I'm kind of in awe of that, and mm -hmm. 
in all my years of playing and listening to, to people I love, but the same Stardust, there's some other, you know, that's funny because we get so busy that we don't talk about it amongst each other. And mm. I would love, love to sit Will and Tommy down, or I don't have to because I'm next to them every day anyway. But I mean, I should, I would love to know, wait a minute, where did that come from? And what were you doing? What did you just record that you had to go there to get away from that? Yes. Uh, because they were kind of commandeering. Uh, Lawrence would come in, of course, a, a lot. I would fly in because we did this in Tommy's studio. But yeah, it's uh, it's it, it's interesting. I, I, I guess maybe that's uh, as I'm just realizing this as I was talking about it. Maybe one of the reasons that I'm hesitant bringing my material forward because not only may it not be sticks like, but there's a high uh, bar for anything you want to present because they're all about well, yeah let's hear it you know yeah. and i i love my songwriting i'm not i'm not even putting myself down at all i'm just saying i might not be in that that might not be my bullseye sure so when i felt that the thing the other day for example that i that i thought might be great for jay i thought well should i call jay Y or should i call call the producers here and and run it past them first and again Nothing may be, may come of it. I'm trying to give you a little scoop of the inside. What you know, Ricky Phillips being thrown into sticks after all my crazy road getting here. Been yeah. here 20, 20 years now with these guys, and I kind of know know how it works, how it's how it. Not I don't. None of us know how it's done. It's magic. It's, it's <laughs> magic. Really, in the end, I think all bands who have had longevity will tell you that. You can try and stick to a formula all you want, but if it's not you, that's your, going to be your bad record. Probably. Indeed, indeed. Well, and, you know, and again, I think for me particularly, it's always been the musicality, and I tend to gravitate towards your lines. I gravitate towards a synth riff. I, you know, more than lyrics, for me, lyrics are an afterthought, and unfortunately, there's been some amazing tunes that afterwards, when I listen to the lyrics, I'm going, oh, that's what this was about. But... The <laughs> So much agree with you because when I would hear the Who, I would just hear John Entwistle, you know, and, yeah. I, and all of a sudden I'd realize, oh wow, you know, that's really, a, you know, that's a great vocal there, or that's a good, what a great guitar part. But I had over, totally, Entwistle just pulled me in so much, absolutely, um, that I, I, it's just that's a great point to make. And how about Paul McCartney? Oh yeah. And, do 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 do. Penny Lane, there is yeah. na 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 na. I mean, who comes up with this? How do you, what, what part of your brain do you separate and do that melody with that bass line over it? Indeed. It's, yeah, I've learned so much from and respect so many, so many of, of the band. Thank God I was born when I was born, so I could be young and, and, and impressionable, and didn't already have my nose up about you know, which which happens, and you get. It's sort of stuck in your rut, but the bass players that came out of that, and Chris Squire, of course, and some of these guys I've actually gotten to meet and and hang with, and it takes me a minute to pull out of, you know, worship boy and and and, and have a have a literal conversation. But and John Entwistle was one of was a man of few words, at least around me. So I had a couple really great little exchanges with him. But he was kind of in his quiet period. If he's not always in his quiet period, so I didn't. And, and not being like in a bar hanging out, you, you didn't get to see somebody loosen up. But I, I, I'm fortunate enough that a lot of the guys that I've I've really liked along the way have I've been able to at least have a little bit of a conversation and get to know. And every one of them, just a gem. Everyone, yeah. Nice, nice. Well, and kind of circling back because Sticks is such a busy. You guys usually doing about like a hundred dates a year and i know you've got pending concert uh, tours coming up you're going to be teaming up with foreigner on the renegades and jukebox heroes tour and mm -hmm. you're going to be in vegas end of january beginning of february so yeah. obviously you're very busy with the sticks material but again you mentioned that you do your own songwriting and you find time to do your own projects in in the at the same time I have. I think it, that that thing that happened three or four years ago, almost four years ago now, yeah, kind of mucked up the works. But I was able to do, like for example, the Brownie Montrose ten by ten record and produce that and play a lot of the instruments, keyboards, and guitars with incredible guitarists and other people on that record. And I wanted to make that right, and I 
Ronnie's wife had called me and basically said, you know, this is going to never come out if you don't take it over. And so when she opened the door, I started flying from, after, instead of going home off the road, I would fly to San Francisco or whatever studio I was trying to record somebody in and picking up Joe Bonamas at his hotel and sending stuff to Rick Derringer in Florida to a studio where he could go in and put a solo on for me and all this stuff. And Sammy Hagar had already done his stuff before Ronnie passed. And there were other about four songs that had a lot of other people on them before Ronnie passed. But the rest of them were, you know, just completely naked. And, and so, uh, you know, it was a great task to take on. But wow, I didn't see it coming. But I... I love doing that, and I have not been able to do it as much in sticks because we we work a lot. Yes, you, I don't know if the general public knows, but we're out every year all year. We go home for sometimes we'll get six or seven days at home, but I'd rather have it this way. But anyway, I'm, I love playing. I love being. I love looking out and seeing the smiling faces and people who respect and enjoy what you do and that you're making them happy. And, and, and uh, of course, greet, meet and greets have sort of gone away since that thing that happened. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's what's to come here. But we if we do love our fans and we do we do, we'll talk about them. You know, there'll yeah. be somebody say, hey, by the way, did you see so and so doing the blah 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 out there in the third? Yeah, it's, uh, it's funny. Uh, you know, so we we notice people and we know we've seen people. Over. I've seen there was one little girl used to come up and she handed me this thing that she had drawn of me. Mm. Mom held her up to and everything. Well, now she's got kids. Oh wow! You know who she's bringing to the shows. <laughs> so you know, just a. Uh, I love I love it, what we're able to do and, and respect it with everything. Very Try nice. To it with everything too, yeah. Well, and since we're talking about shows, have you made any changes in your gear, how you're getting your sound? Okay. So I changed amplifiers and oh god, I'm gonna go up on the on what it is. It's a smaller I think it's a hundred watt head ampeg. But anyway, um, I was using big, you know, SVT heads and everything always mm -hmm. have it's what I'm used to but running through Palmer's the way I work have to work with sticks I was at one point I was told the crew just wasn't gonna have it that I had a big you know cabinet to lug around that they had to find some place to stash under a stage or in a room so that it wouldn't bleed into other things I sort of became the red-haired stepchild in that because I was really really pissed off and, and adamant that I get my sound and it, it's only me that is to blame but now for years I've had to kind of relent and give in to, I mean, I've put up a fight as much as I can going from what strings, you know, and, and guys have a lot to do, so they don't want to ha get, make it harder, their job to be harder, because I, ins I insisted on changing my strings every day. Wow. Always had my whole career. I, I want new strings, you know? And then the, you know, other, other things, but when, You've got a, it, it, this is a big organization. And when it moves into town, there's there's trucks, there's buses, there's, you know, there's a lot going, a lot of moving parts. And we do it every day, tear it down, build it up. So with all that respect for our crew, who are fantastic, incredible guys, love them, love to hang out with them, love to get drunk with them, you know, whatever it is on the day <laughs> off. But I want, they're just, they're, they're family. It's all family. We're probably, probably see each other more than we see our own families. And I would imagine that's very accurate, actually. Indeed. And, well, at a certain point, when I see that my argument is hurting somebody's, not necessarily hurting their feelings, but making them work harder because of me and my, you know, insistency on certain things, I've, I've learned to kind of let go. But getting back to your question, I have a smaller head so that I can run through Palmer's, which mm -hmm. was in Van Halen, I think was the first one I knew of that used Palmer's to get his sound out to the, the house. And... I don't understand it, so not to tell tell me how to completely explain what a Palmer does and how, how how it works. But most of your big bands are using Palmers, especially the guys that like the Marshall sound and, and just the guitar players. Yeah. And when they introduced it to me, I hated it. But then they found out that they were they had it through a wrong send or something like that. And when they changed it, and I heard it, I'm like, well, that sounds great. And they said, well, that's the Palmer. So that I do test everything. I don't just I'm not, not that agreeable all the time. <laughs> but it worked. And as soon as Gary Loiso, got, God bless him, he was our sound man who's, who's since passed away. Lovely, lovely guy. Amazing talent. 
everything he mixed and recorded for us was spot on. He was the one that made it work for me, and it was, it's 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 glued in, it's in cement, and so bass wise, I like. See, if I could sound like John it was, or if I could sound like Chris Squire, or but that's that would that's not the stick sound, you know. So I have to get as I like an aggressive sound. I naturally play with my fingers or my or a pick, whichever one I'm using. I generally like, these days I play mostly with my fingers, but there are certain songs like. Too much time, down and down and down and down. That has to be a pick. I mean, yeah. There's certain songs where I'll grab a pick, but I do oversee my sound. And since we moved to the amplifiers, I guess we could go to the basses I'm using now. And I've kind of, I've got some basses. I, I miss them, and then all of a sudden I'll pick one and go, well, "Why isn't this out on the road? Why is it?" So I'll be flip flopping a bit, but I'm trying to have some mainstay basses that maybe they're not an old vintage piece or anything, or maybe they don't whatever I'm not certain things are cool and certain things are uncool with guitar players and bass players down the line especially of our vintage so I have a lot of that but I've had to reblend to what sounds good out front and the basses that I have I have two basses I think I have the only two that were made they're Italias and it's kind of a funny story you know I may have talked about this I had Spectre and, and Stuart Spectre was a dear sweet friend of mine and I had the very first five string Mm -hmm. Spectre bass made and it was stolen from me and uh -huh. along with another four string when I was in bad English that those were my basses that's what I recorded those records with and I wanted to kill myself because I mean that I, I found the perfect sound uh -huh. and nothing compared so I've always tried to to get that model as much as I can and so Italia came to me Italia was still in Italy at the time but they had moved from England to, I think, Korea to have them built. And they promised me to do my specs of what I wanted and close to a Spectre, really, is what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And so those bases sound a lot very, that far from being, being a Spectre. Nice. And uh, I have a vintage, well, not, it's not really vintage, it's kind of modeled. I, I designed a base that Fender built for me that's a five-string checkboard binding. It's black. Um, it's got some pretty cool atonements, and I'll be damned if it doesn't sound great. It's got a cool Fender sound. So I've got that covered. Whatever I've got on the road right now and kind of we're working on, it looks like we may have be able to, and then people are going to hear, hear this and come and see that I'm not doing it, but I could do all white bases, but four different ones. And so we may do that, except that my black Fender, I don't think I can take him out of the game. He's been there ever since I first started with Sticks, and people just love the sound. Just warm and gritty, and, and I get away with it. It's not so techy sounding that it, it, it really sounds rootsy mm -hmm. and works really well with, with the band. So whatever it is, I sit there and I look at the set list and each night when it's given to me and Greg will be backstage work. He, they work all day. They show up in the morning, they throw up the circus tent and, and start working on loading the trucks and, and all that stuff. At a certain time, generally right after, we ha generally have dinner around 5.30, catering is usually 5.30 to 6.30. And between that time and going on stage, some, Greg and I will get together and we'll go over the set list that night. And what are we introducing tonight that's different than last night? And I try to make it as easy for him as possible to make changes. So we're trying to limit it down to <laughs> three or four bases. <laughs> you know, I just, I can't just play the same bass all night. I'm not that guy. Yeah. You know, I, I, a lot of my heroes do, but I, I want a different color. You know, you don't, this painting doesn't look like that. You know, mm -hmm. And you need this for, you know, I don't know if other guys do that. I don't know if a lot of other guys do that, but that's what I've just been doing for the last 20 years, you know, with nice. these guys. Anyway, with, with bad English, I probably used two Spectre basses, a five string and a four. And with the babies, I just played my my 68 Tele bass. And that was my bass. Oh, and then I did switch over to um, my first uh, active bass, which was a Kramer when they first came out. And Tony Brock, my drummer in the, in the babies, he was like, we went in a music store in Detroit and I plugged it in. He go, oh, mate, you've got to get that. Oh, that sounds fantastic, you know. So we just something new and different. It did sound great, 
So I ended up recording the very last On the Edge Babies record with that bass predominantly. I did use my 68, I think, on a song or two. But uh, Keith Olsen discovered something that I found, and to this day as a bass player, I found very interesting. He found out that the active basses and the reason that a lot of producers were kind of de- thumbs down on them is because there's a little, little bit of an inherent fuzziness when you overdrove it. And so mm. he found that he said, you know, if I design, this should actually have two 9-volt batteries in it, which now you'll see basses do. But this is way, just this is like 30 years before. Yeah. You know, what else they actually were building it that way. And Keith, so what Keith would do is he would just back it off, and he'd have me playing. He would just back it off from, like, let's say 1 to 10. He would back it off to maybe an 8.5. And, and that was usually just enough of the of the curve to, to get that unwanted distortion out of out of the sound of, of my active bass in those days so that was a good little like i had keith olson god bless him he was the most incredible producer learned so much from him but anyway you know this it, it, i know there's guys out there that is nuts and as crazy as i am and i've got so many bases that i'll never probably play again but i can't get rid of them because they're my buddies and I, they, we have a history together and we did this together we did that together but as i morph into what we're doing in sticks now that's kind of my focus about what i play i do have a few guys here in, in austin that, that i play with or do sessions for or whatever and so i'll pull things out again which is nice to see an old friend and take them to the session but you know where we are in sticks that's that's kind of what i got so Looking ahead, as we mentioned, tours and all kinds of stuff. Any more? I know there's with these two last releases with Crash of the Crown and the same Stardust. We've got a lot of new music to digest. And again, with the same Stardust, there were a lot of some live tracks in there as well. So those were incorporated. But any new albums or what's going on for the future? What are the thoughts? Let me just say really quickly, I thought you were referring to the songs you know, same stardust or earlier so now now i see what you were actually asking me yeah right now we are i don't know everybody has been writing i'm kind of excited about this next record because what's happened with the success of the last two records i mean i don't think maybe i'm wrong about this but i don't think sticks has ever released a, an album that debuted on billboard at number one and for that to happen with crash of the crown kind of was shocking Mm-hmm. It was like, what? <laughs> but even if it if it enters the whatever the next thing that comes out, even if it enters sixty mm-hmm. or one hundred and sixty, it's going to be good. And I don't know what that age group who has opened the doors for that those numbers to have happened. I don't know what's going on with their fan base that may be supporting that. I'm really I don't really follow that kind of stuff. I never have in my bands. But whatever we do next, I think is going to be. It's going to be cool from a, uh, unless, I just this thought just passed me as I'm, I'm speaking, unless we get too nitpicky. I hope that this, because of this success, that we let this, let whatever we come up with breathe mm-hmm. and be is, because we've been able, we did that because we didn't have expectations. We didn't know. But I think those are careful things that you learn with age to let, let something live where it's supposed to live. I have heard songs were introduced initially that I went, oh, that's a smash, and then it's a dog when, by the time it gets to record it. It's, it's a shame when that happens, but it doesn't happen often. But there are songs I can remember in my past. I wish I could give you a title right now, but there was one in the baby's days that I thought, oh, this is going to be huge, and we kind of squeezed the love out of it somehow by being, so, I want this, I want this, I want that, and all of a sudden it became, okay, everybody's happy with what their part, but now the song sucks, you know, yeah. or it's, it's not as good as it was. It doesn't have the magic. Anyway. Sticks is interesting when we're there's people are always working, people are always recording, everybody in their mm-hmm. studio. So boom, ideas at the in the end. What and even if it's something like I'm not involved in the writing, I'm trying to go. Okay, that's a badass guitar part, or that's a badass vocal. I don't want to get in the way of that, but I want to be in. I want to be in the party. So what do I do? You know. That that's everybody just loves. We love what we do. Yeah. The, a cool band nobody's phoning it in nobody got here because they had a cool outfit you know <laughs> everybody's here because they had some goods to bring along and add to the party this is a great place for me to be and nice. I every guy in this band so much nice well again 
that has us awa eagerly awaiting future projects and albums from Styx. And of course, to see you guys on tour. If people want to know where you're going to be or the best place to look up to find this stuff, Styxworld.com. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think I, I don't really get too much involved in, in all of the the online stuff and the but I do know that the office is very active in staying up with it and, mm -hmm. and, and keeping that going. It's just never been really a focus of mine. But and I do kind of, we were earlier talking about the fans and doing the meet and greets. I, I miss seeing the people up close and personal. With, I, I always wonder if they think, do you guys even care? You know, but we do. We, we, love, we love our fans. And uh, it, things are different. Who knows? May, may circle back. Well, but, um, the reality is, I think, for most of us that have lived during these times, we have to accept that some things are just going to be different. And I think especially as we age, also, when we were all young, we were just indestructible. There was nothing that could touch us, nothing that could happen. And this yeah. was this whole experience, this collective experience for the world was a real eye opener. And it, it just kind of has you rethink some things. And again, I don't know whether they will ever go back to exactly the way they were before because it was such an eye-opener at least until maybe younger generations forget about this i think it's probably going to take that <laughs> much time but anyway also if do you have any place if people want to know your particular projects if you've got something that is not sticks related is there any good place to look there you know i generally rely on whoever it is like if we were talking about the monstrous project i was, I was really relying on really others to keep People, oh, I don't really have time. Just, you know, and generally, if I am doing something, the sticks page will have. They'll always bring it up, and I'm always surprised. Going, oh wow, I didn't even know they knew I was doing that. If I was off doing a project or something, so that's cool. They generally they got our back. We've got really great management, and, and it's a big family. I can't. When I think about it. It's just like it spreads out even more than the people you see on stage, or even the guys behind us that are giving us our gear. It's, it's, a, it's, it's. There's a lot, a lot of moving parts, and it's taken years to put it all together to where it is now, and it's just a good group. There's, there's other bands that have this, too, and we'll all tell you, it's, gosh, it's such a secure feeling to go out on stage and kill. Yeah. When you've got this army behind you that's holding you, holding you up there. Absolutely. Well, Ricky, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule, having us here in your home studio. <laughs> Much continued yeah. success. We'll look forward to many more great things from Styx and yourself. Folks, you've seen him here, Ricky Phillips on Bass Musician Magazine. Thank you, Raul. Pleasure.